Hi guys, this is the next Acquisition of Skills screencast and this week we're going to be talking about Schema Theory. Okay, Schema Theory is in contrast to the Open and Closed Loop Theory invented by Adams or created by Adams. And Schema Theory suggests that instead of storing one loop for every single skill that we do or learn we store a pattern of generalized movements first so running throwing catching jumping bounding etc and then from that generalized store we create or adapt a motor program from it so for example if our generalized movement is a throw from that generalized movement we can create a program for throwing a dart throwing a frisbee throwing a javelin throwing a cricket ball bowling a cricket ball throwing a baseball so all of those different throws are new programs but initially we have a pattern of generalized movements such as the throw a basic throw and that's completely different to the loop theory which, which as I mentioned suggests that we've got different loops for every single skill that we do the reason this is different and the reason this was devised or thought about was the fact that the brain can't possibly store so much information so um, the schema theory suggests that this is a way that the brain remembers so many skills as it just links it to a generalized pattern of movements okay how do we get the experience to create schema well this is collected from four different areas called memory items so the first memory item is the knowledge of initial conditions the second is the knowledge of response specifications the third is the knowledge of sensory consequences and the fourth is the knowledge of movement outcome and you'll note that I put two in green and two in blue and that is because they're split in half two relate to what we call recall schema and two relate to what we call recognition schema which I'll go into now okay so the first green aspect number one the first memory item is the knowledge of initial conditions and here we have a picture of Marta famous Brazilian footballer the knowledge of initial conditions relates to the individual having previously experienced a similar situation so if we look at the picture before Marta even arrives at that situation with the ball she will think to herself okay I'm dribbling against two defenders or I'm dribbling against a defender have I seen that situation before and my brain will use that as recall schema okay so knowledge of initial condition conditions is have I seen this situation before that I'm in now memory item two is the knowledge of response specifications here we have Kobe Bryant the knowledge of response specifications involves showing knowledge of what to do in this situation. So once I've realized have I seen this situation before in the first memory item, I'm then going to think, OK, well, I'm in this situation now. Do I pass? Do I dribble? Or do I shoot? What do I do in this situation? Okay. So the combination of knowledge of initial conditions have I seen this situation before plus the knowledge of response specifications what do I do in this situation equals what we call recall schema so those two memory items are recalled the recall schema have we seen these things before what do I have to do they're recalled from the brain and the purpose of recall schema is to start a movement so initiate a movement or a skill and to store information about the production of the generalized movement okay so as your movement happens it stores information about it what did you do that time well actually I dribbled this time so I'll store that information for next time memory item three the first of the two blue items is knowledge of sensory consequences here we have a netball game and knowledge of sensory consequences is how should the skill feel so we're thinking about kinesthesis so in this situation 
how hard does this attacker in purple need to push that ball in order to shoot it over the defender and into the net or in another situation how hard to throw the ball to reach the target so it's knowledge of what I'm feeling how should this skill feel the last memory item is knowledge of movement outcome here we have a, a rugby league game in Australia and knowledge of movement outcome is involving knowing what the result of a skill is likely to be so what happens when I do that skill what is the outcome and I need to know that for example here the rugby league player has used the dummy effectively to send two defenders the wrong direction the player throwing the dummy must know that that dummy is going to do that and then they will accelerate into the space created so he knew through knowledge of movement outcome what that dummy would do what the action of his thinking would do or the skill would be okay so again the knowledge of sensory consequences how should that skill feel as I do that skill plus the knowledge of movement outcome what will happen if I perform this skill what's the outcome of that that equals recognition schema and the purpose of recognition schema is to control the movement or to control the skill that's being performed and also as recall schema it's evaluate the effectiveness of that performance so recognition schema will control the individual doing the dummy move in rugby league but at the same time it will evaluate the effectiveness of that so did that dummy come off was it worthwhile doing that dummy okay it's fairly complex this so you're going to need to go over this a few times um, and bring any notes or questions to the class and we'll cover it in a little bit more depth